I thought there was an unsung hero in the build-up to this goal uh, that probably isn't getting the credit that he deserves. And that, for me, is a man by the name of Alexander Zinchenko. And here's why I think he was the unsung hero here. Now, if I take you um, to take a look at this here, we'll just... Um, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. I don't know what I'm doing. Here we go. There we go. Right. So this is in the build up to that goal, right? So you can see that Zinchenko has drifted into that midfield area where he loves to get the ball and he's got it. And he's been pressed quite aggressively by two Wolverhampton Wanderers players. Now, it would have been so, so easy for Alexander Zinchenko in this situation to feel panicked, to feel under pressure and to not want to take a risk with his passing. And this is where Zinchenko stands out. The fact that he's got this confidence and this belief in his own ability to execute technically quite difficult things and take the risks in the moments where, you know, other players might not is where his value is. That's what he brings to the table that others don't. Now, it would have been so easy for him in this situation to just turn back and roll it back towards either a defender who's sitting in a deeper position or even go as far uh, as all the way back to the goalkeeper, just from being under pressure. I've talked so much, guys, in recent years, uh, recent years, recent months, I guess, um, about the need to get the ball into your best players as early as possible. Sounds like a pretty basic analysis, right? But it is really, really important because if you can work the ball out into those areas early, those players that you're sending the ball to have the opportunity to take a touch without being under immense pressure, particularly if they've drifted into a bit of space. But they also then have the ability um, to sort of start to dictate the narrative themselves. Now, we talk a lot about fullbacks. When they're defending wingers, we always say, why didn't he show him down the outside? Why didn't he show him on the inside? Why didn't he show him onto his weaker foot? Well, if you are the one on the ball, very early and nice and early in the move and in the build-up, guess what? You, as the winger, as the attacker, you dictate the narrative. You dictate what's going to happen next. And that's what's really, really important about working the ball out to these players nice and early. So have a look at Zinchenko here. Uh, for those of you watching, if you're listening, don't worry, I'll explain it as best as I can. He receives the ball in midfield. He's got two Wolves players, I would say, within five yards of him. And rather than panicking and saying, I'm going to roll it back to my keeper or I'm going to roll it back to another defender. What he does is he spots Bukayo Saka out on the right-hand side. You can't even see Bukayo Saka in your picture here because he's drifted so far wide in this instance. And then he says, right, I need to get the ball out to him as soon as possible. He's not going to play it with his right foot because that might be a risk. He wants to make sure 100% that this ball is going to get to Bukayo Saka. He wants to get it there to him so that he can pick up the ball and attack that Wolverhampton Wanderers penalty area. So with the outside of his boot showcasing his technical brilliance, Alexander Zinchenko plays this ball nice and early. And as Wes Bird says in the chat, this is Zinchenko at his best. It absolutely is. Now, I can't show you guys the clip because obviously um, there are uh, rights holder rules and copyright bits and pieces and stuff like that. But um, if I just take this on a little bit, I'm just going to take it on to when Saka receives the ball. So Saka has the ball now at his feet. And look, it's exactly what I described. The Wolves defence have, have tucked in because obviously they feared Arsenal coming through the middle. But Kaio Saka has taken up position in a, a nice wide area. And when he receives the ball, he's got all the time in the world to take his touch, to set himself up for what he wants to do, to look up and spot uh, what's happening in the middle uh, and a potential opportunity to pick out a teammate. And he is in full control of what's going to happen next. That is the importance of giving your best players the ball as early as possible and finding them when they pick up those pockets of space. And again, I'll, I'll take it on ever so slightly. Um, he then sort of uh, takes a couple of touches, makes his way towards the corner of the box, glances up and decides to deliver the ball in towards the penalty area. And you can see Kai Havertz's movement across the front post. And Kai Havertz, when he gets there, of course, does brilliantly uh, beats Jose Saar, beats the defender to the ball. And Kai Havertz is on hand to win the header and put Arsenal in front. It's a proper, proper 
centre forwards goal from Kai Havertz. It really, really is. And it was brilliant, brilliant to see, um, you know, him produce that because I, I said I'd revisit this and we'll do it now. There's so much talk, so much talk about Arsenal needing a number nine. I often say that this is a, a narrative, I think, that, you know, that stems from maybe a, a previous need or, or problem that people felt Arsenal had. And actually, when you look at the statistics and you look at uh, about you look at the context around this, actually, you probably find that it's quite way off the mark, actually. Um could we do with that killer goal scorer to give us something different? Of course we could. But is it the biggest need that this Arsenal team has? I just don't think it is. And so if you're a manager that said, no, constantly, I've got my forwards and I'm happy with them and I've got what I need within the group. When a player that everybody has been telling you cannot play as a number nine does number nine things like Kai Havertz did yesterday, that must be incredibly satisfying for the manager. It also must be incredibly satisfying for Kai Havertz um, as well, because, um, yeah, you know, he's he's been much maligned since joining uh, Arsenal. He, he really has. Um, but thankfully, you know, he's, he's settled in and he's found his feet and he's, he's doing brilliantly uh, at the moment.